In our first scenario here in Chapter 6, we're going to take a look at the often needed how to loop through files in a folder and load them up into SQL Server. Okay, so we as SSIS developers at some point seemingly all need to do this. Often you'll have many packages uh, that run on the same server that this is all they do. They simply look for folders and they loop through every file in a folder and load it into the SQL Server. Well, we're going to do that, and what we're going to do, though, is we're going to try to make it a little more dynamic. We're going to take advantage of our expressions. We're going to use variables, uh, and we're going to use some pretty interesting tasks to do this. So I'll tell you what we're going to do. Uh, we need a project document. Um, so I'm just going to say project document. This is project uh, Saturn x14 okay so we'll save our project document here and it's project saturn x14 and here's what we want to do so we want to uh, the goal is to load text file rows into sql server all right simple enough now there's a little bit of information so let's take a look a couple of things here um, we don't really know we don't know when the file will arrive when it does arrive we want to load it up so in other words, we've got to have some way of watching the file system to find out when a file arrives. Once it does arrive, that's when we want to load this process. Okay, so uh, a couple of other little requirements or things about this. We want to change, uh, be able to easily change folder names and locations. We want to easily be able to file names that it's going to load. Uh, let's see, uh, sometimes there will be multiple files in the folder. Sometimes it will just be one. Load all files. Okay. Now five, once you have processed a file, move it to an archive folder. That way we won't process it again. Now there is one business rule related to that and that would be never reprocess a file. Okay, so let's, let's kind of slow down. I went through that fairly quickly. Let's kind of slow down and walk through each of these steps. I think everybody understands the idea. We've got a text file with rows. Let's load it up into SQL Server. Um, that's the easy part because we've really done that several times throughout the course already. What we have not really done is number one. I'm sorry, I hit the wrong combination here. So number one, we haven't talked about how to actually watch the file system for when a file arrives. There's going to be a couple of different techniques that we can do, and I'm going to share those with you here in just a little bit. Uh, okay, so number two, we want to be able to change, let's do two and three together. We want to be able to change folder names and locations as well as file names very easily. How can we do that in SSIS? Can you think of any ways that make it quite obvious where files are, or makes it easy to change? To me, this is going to be variables. So we're going to store all of these in variables, package level variables, and VARs, abbreviation for variables there. And that way we can see very quickly when we load the package where we're assigned for this. Uh, we'll change them using expressions, but it will also make it very easy to use package configurations if later on we want to make this very, very flexible. Uh, so step number four, sometimes there will be multiple files in a folder. How can we load all of the files for a given folder? 
the for each loop. So we'll just simply use the enumeration, the file enumeration, to say for every file in the folder, go ahead and process those. Now, step number five, what can we use to move a file to an archive folder? Well, this is going to be our file system task. And so our file system task is going to create the archive folder if it doesn't exist. If it does exist, then it simply moves the file into the archive folder. Okay. Uh, and the business rule is uh, perhaps one of the more interesting parts of this particular package. Never reprocess a file. Well, really, there's only one way to do this. The, you know, the, you could have had a situation where, for example, you made it through here, you found all these files in a folder, you loaded them up, and then right before the archive step occurred, you, your package died. And so you've successfully loaded up the data, but then the package stopped processing before it actually was able to archive the file. So if you ran it again, then it would reprocess the file, and we don't, we don't want to have that happen. So what we want to do is have a storage solution for this. We're going to actually create a table in SQL Server to store our processing. And that way we will know when we load the file up whether or not it's ever been processed before. I'll show you. Maybe that'll make more sense once we kind of develop into here. So you're ready to go with Project Saturn X14? Okay, let's get this going. First off, I think we'll need a couple of things. We're going to have to have a table to store to load the files up right we want to load it into a table uh, so we need a table and then we need a control file so let's get started with the table we'll do the table and the control file uh, here rather quickly so I'm going to use the learn first.com database and let's just do something like customer product purchase history and just for simplicity's sake, uh, sake I'm going to make these all numeric. Uh, let's actually put an order ID column up here as well. And it's a little bit denormalized, but uh, it's okay. And they bought X number. That's all I'm going to do. I, I could put a primary key in here if you needed to. Um, I don't really feel the need to do such a thing here. So I'm going to just go ahead and say F5 and go. Okay, so we've built our table, the customer product purchase history table. Now let's build some sample data to go with it. So let's get ourselves just a basic text file. And we had order ID, customer ID, product ID, and quantity. So for order ID 10,001, customer one purchased product ID 1, and they bought 23. Uh, on the same order ID, customer 1 bought product ID 16, and they bought 2, and then a different order ID, a new customer, a new product, and they brought 12. And I, is this enough to kind of get the idea of uh, what we have? And I'm going to call this our control file. And if you watched our videos on why you needed to understand and use a control file, this is the perfect case. We don't have an actual set of data to play with. We have a fake data file. This is a data file that will allow us to build our SSIS package to get everything set up. But once we really deploy the package, we won't use the control file. We'll use the files that get downloaded or get placed into those folders. Okay, so we've got that set up. I'll tell you what, let's go ahead and we'll stop here. We'll come back in the next video and take a look at Project Saturn X14.